Okay, the first part um, is us trying to go between radians and degrees. So did you find that part? Radians and degrees. Okay, what is the magic conversion between radians and degrees? What do we always know? What is a full circle? A full circle, 360 degrees, or two pi from the circumference formula. So therefore, what is a, a half of a circle? 180 degrees or just a pi? Okay, so here we go. Five radians equals how many degrees? When I know pi radians is 180 degrees, and then it's a cross multiplication. Times and divide. Okay, times divide. And then remember that the course makes you go to two decimal places on your provincial exam, so you should be practicing that. Okay, can you do the same thing with number two? Same thing. We're in radians, and I want to know how many degrees it would equal. Okay, so this is on your test, and remember on your test that I'm making you do one page without your graphing calculator. So if you need access to one of my normal calculators, that's good, we can do that. Okay, you can have that, but you can't have a graphing calculator on one of the pages. We're gonna try some stuff with it. Okay, draw, uh, oh, it says draw the angle. We forgot to do that. So if I'm going to draw that angle, um, well, I know that this is 90, and then I have 180, 270, and then I would be a little bit past 270, right? Does that make sense for drawing? I'm past 270 degrees, three quarters of the circle, I'm past it. How do I draw seven pi radians? Well, I know that pi is a half of a circle. So this is one pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi, 7 pi, and you would land exactly horizontal. But you spin around. It's like all that spinning you have to do. Okay, draw the angle, convert to radians. So 500 degrees is a full circle, because that's 360. And then I'd have my normal calculator, so just after 360, I still have to do 140 more degrees yet. So how do you go 140 degrees more? Somewhere kind of in the middle-ish of that one, right? Okay, converting. I'm in degrees and I would like to go two radians. And then what is the conversion I know? So you're going to have to remember the conversion. 180 equals a pi. And you notice how I lined them up differently? The last time I did pi equals 180. This time I'm lining up, right? 
degrees radians. So times and divide. And remember that inside a circle is 2 pi as a number that's 6.28. So that's how many radians there are in a full circle. Okay, and then the last one of these is negative angled. So a negative angle just means that I'm going to head downward this time. So can you head backwards for 130? So 90, so I would end up swiveling like that much. Okay, and there's my ratio. Here I am, I want that. What do I know? Make sure you line them up properly so you can divide, times and divide. At 2.27. What? No, negative, yep. Yeah. Is that the number you're getting though? Yeah. Radians. Okay, so the next one is an estimate question. So you're most likely going to have this on your test as a multiple choice, and you're trying to pick the best. So it's in radians. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm guessing your brain doesn't even work in radians, right? When you see something, you're probably like, I don't know. So my suggestion is, why don't you think about that in degrees? So how many degrees would this all be? What would be a good number of degrees? How much? So all the way, all this yellow amount. How much yellow would there be? It's pretty big. It's not a full circle, though. How many degrees do you think? Maybe it might be better for your eyes. What's not? What's that? 30-ish degrees. So then this would be 330. Okay. So if I'm going to say that that's 330 degrees, but the test question says I have to estimate it in radians. Well, all I need to do now is just convert. Times and divide. Okay, and then it would be a multiple choice. So now you're looking for the best answer, right? And it's not going to be what you have. It's just going to be what's the closest to it, okay? So my suggestion is just work your brain in degrees and do some conversions because if it's multiple choice. Okay, on this one you have to give me all the properties. This would be without your graphing calculator on your test. You're going to be doing this. So here's what I kind of start with. I tell myself what's on the bottom. Negative eight. What's the top height? Two. Then I have to figure out, well, what's the middle number now? What's the middle number? Anybody know what's halfway between there? And what you can do is add the numbers and divide by 2. Add equals divide by 2. Are you getting a negative 3? Then I'm also going to map out the space. So from the middle to the top, middle to the bottom, doesn't matter, they're both the same. How much space is in each zone?
which is five. Okay, so let's go over here. We can answer range, low to high. Low to high is how you do a range. Domain, how far left to right does this graph move? Left to right. And lots of times the applied gives you multiple choice or it gives you stuff like that. So what does that look like? X is an element of all the real numbers. That's what it would look like on a page. If you ever saw that, that means the same thing. Because we're talking about X, because that's domain. X can be anything, all real. What's the midline? So I'm going to say, what's the equation of the midline? So when you add an equation, we have a negative 3, but what equals negative 3? Y. Amplitude. That was the five, that was the distance up and down. Okay, so um, period. What do you want to do to get the period? Do you want to go from a top to a top or something like that? Or it's not quite pretty, but. Okay, so what are we going to pick here? How much space do you want to guess is this? One point, what do you want to do? 1.25. So if you're going to pick 25 there, you have to do the same increment here. So what would this number be if you're picking that? negative 3.75. So that's what we're going with. And how much space then is between there? So be careful, you're trying to get the space. So work with integer numbers here. Five. Okay, for me, I found something a little bit easier. I don't know if you would have seen it. Like I knew the midline was at negative three. So I can see right there, that's a middle. And then the next time I got there was at five, like that. So I saw that, but you might not see it. Sometimes I don't like working with middle numbers because it throws people off because this is also a middle number, but that's not the same. Do you understand that this hasn't completed a cycle? From here to here is not a cycle. You actually go through the middle a few times during a cycle, right? This is what I call the middle heading up, and here is a middle heading down. Okay, giving me your A, B, and D spots. So a C is the transformation we are not working with. <clears throat> okay, so I need the important info. I need the middle. And I need the amplitude out of that. That's important for me. So if we were at a six on the top and a negative two on the bottom, we are now at, did you pick a two number in the middle? And we are stretching above it by four and down by four. <clears throat> okay, so where do I put my four stretch? 
in here. Which one does it go into? A. It's the multiplier in the front. Where do I put the, the middle? There's a 2 in the middle. Where does that go? D plus 2. And then the B has something to do with the period. And you have to have something memorized. Do you remember what it is? How do you do the period is what? 2 pi over B. That is the formula, 2 pi over B. <clears throat> okay, so what is the period of this thing? What are we doing here? What do you want to do? A top to a top? Middle to a middle? Anybody have a suggestion what they want to do? Bottom to a bottom? Alright, let's go from this bottom to that bottom. Okay, so with the tick marks, every tick mark is how much? Does anybody have a, a graph scale for us? 60 degree tick marks, does that make sense? Each tick is 60, so this would be 180 degrees then, right? And then this one is what? Four twenty. So how much space is between those points? That's a period. So two hundred and forty degrees is the period. Okay. This isn't going to work for me. So 240 degrees is the period, but then we're talking about 2 pi here. So I can't do this because I've got a degree here and this is a radian. So would you be okay if I replaced 2 pi with 360 degrees so I can talk in the same language? Would that be, make sense to you? 360 degrees and 2 pi are the same thing, just different languages. Okay, so how do you solve for B? You need to flip-flop those around. So B equals 360 divided by 240, which is 1.5. So if I had to graph that in my graphing calculator, I'd be in degree mode, and then I'd make my scale look um, like a degree. Okay, now I did the backwards thing where I gave you the A, the B, and the A, the B, and the D. Okay, so let's jot out our important info. So here's our important info. I would like to figure out what's the top, the middle, and the bottom, and what's the stretch. Okay, so 10. Let's start with 10. Where should I place the 10 on this little chart I've made on the side here? Should I put it in the top, the middle, the bottom, or the arrow stuff? I'm going to put 10 on the arrow stuff. Would that make, is that what you did? Um, and then... Minus four, I'm gonna to go to that next. Where should I place it now? In the middle. So can you tell me what the number would be on the top and the bottom now? And then FYI, would it make sense that your range should be 20 apart? It's always doubled the amplitude. Whatever your top and bottom are, those are doubled the amplitude. So range, we got that. Negative 14 to 6. 
amplitude is 10. The midline was y equals negative 4. And the period is a formula, so you have to figure that out. And I'm okay if you tell me your period in a radian or in a degree. So 2 pi over 3. If you are a person in radians, if you are a person in degrees, instead of 2 pi, you are doing uh, 360. So this person got it correct, this person got it correct, and this person also got it correct if they did 2 pi over 3 and actually did it in a calculator. All three answers are correct. Okay? Okay, so this one is a chart. So you have to figure out what's missing in the chart. So I'm going to label things as this top, middles, and bottoms. I'm going to write down what this is. So 21 looks like it's a top. 17 looks like a middle. 13 is a bottom. Middle, top, middle. So top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. So what's next in that pattern? Are you going to put a bottom? Okay, so always understand sine curves, sinusoidal curves are just repeating that cycle. Okay, make an equation. Okay, so here's some info I'm going to pick out. There's a 4, there's a negative 6. What's in the middle? What's in the middle height of that? Did you get a negative 1? What is the arrow amount? The space up, the space down? Okay, so on this one, we're going to think, what should I put in the A position? So what's your stretching? That's where your 5 goes. What goes at the end? The middle number, and then we have to figure out our period spacing. So if I take a top to a top, let's say, how much space is there in that? So these aren't exact, so I'm just going to pretend this is at 4.5, and then I would that case, I would say that would have been a 10.5, which leaves 6 as a period. When I'm going to talk about this formula, should I use the 2 pi or the 360? What would make more sense with these numbers? 2 pi over b has to equal 6. So then you flip-flop. So pi over 3, just because you can write that, but I just reduced it. Okay, that's all I'm expecting of you. Um, I'm going to add a negative in front of that because the sine curve actually flipped, but you don't have to understand that.
just write it in there, but it's okay to understand. For me, I know that sine curves usually start on a middle and then head up. And this was in the middle and then it headed down, so it just got flipped. But. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some random info and then you have to figure out from what I give you. So this time I gave you amplitude and a midline and you have to get the range. So again, I suggest giving yourself this chart. And this is what I always start with when I'm working with this stuff. And then I fill in what I have and figure it out from there. So I gave you the amplitude and I gave you the midline. Sometimes I might give you the range and you have to get me the midline or the amplitude or something like that. So you have to go back and forth. So I gave you a negative two in the middle and I gave you a nine on the stretches. See, so this one says figure out the range, so get me what would be on the bottom, and get me what's on the top. And then, Here's a good thing to think about. The numbers that you pick should be 18 apart. Because if your amplitude is nine, all the way across should be 18. Okay? Let's pretend it was a multiple choice on your exam. How could you see it written? This would be what they change it to. Does this make sense? This is the same as this. It's just between those numbers. You have to be less than or equal to that, but you have to be greater or equal to that. You're in between those amounts. Okay, so this time I gave you different info. I gave you a min and a max. Okay, so I'm a visual person, so I'm gonna go negative three, negative 11 is a min. So that's kind of the understanding. There was a min and then we went to a max. This is usually my thinking. I draw my little chart here. I do top, middle, bottom, amplitude. Okay, so what is the highest height? Be careful when you read your coordinates. What's the height of the top point? Pick seven. Right, because five is an X, Y is a set, Y seven, that's a height. And the bottom height is negative 11. So we only need the amplitude. You can get the middle if you want. So this is just some mental math stuff. I'm going to let you figure out how you want. Some people might have been like, oh, those are 18 apart. My amplitude is 9. Some people might have gone to the middle and then to the amplitude. doesn't matter how you get there. So the amplitude is 9. The period, so how much space do I have between those points? 
So this one was at a negative 3, and this one was at a 5. So how much space is there in that? 8. But that's not your period. That's not the period. Why isn't it the period? It's only half because this went from a bottom to a top. You need to visualize yourself going from a bottom and then back to a bottom. So if this has traveled eight, I'm thinking about bottom to a bottom. So I, I almost tried to trick you there, right? <clears throat> so 16 would have been the whole thing, okay? Did I fool some people thinking the space between those points is the period? Okay, remember period, you got to go from a point to the next same point. <clears throat> okay, we have a Ferris wheel question. And we're going to do it without our graphing calculator. <clears throat> so, how about you give me this? How about you do that for me? Give me your chart numbers. What's in the middle? What's the amplitude? What's the top? What's the bottom? Okay, so I'm going to put a 21 in the middle. That is the middle number. 18 is the stretch number. which means 39 is the top number and 3 is the bottom number. So do you see how this Ferris wheel is going? <coughs> when you get onto the Ferris wheel, you're 3 off the ground when you're on the side of the Ferris wheel, you're 21 off the ground. And when you're at the top, you're 39 off the ground, right? That's what these numbers are. So what is the diameter of this Ferris wheel? So what is the diameter of the Ferris wheel is the question. 36. And did we get feet? So a couple ways for you to think about it was 39 minus the 3, the top height minus the bottom height. Or somebody could have taken the amplitude and doubled it. That's another way to think about it. Okay, what is the period? What does it represent? So the period is the formula. Should we use 2 pi or 360 when we're doing it? Looking at these numbers, do you think these are radian numbers or degree numbers? Radians. So period equals 2 pi over b, which equals 2 pi over 2.8. Point two four, and it's in minutes because that's what was given. And then, what what does it represent here? A period time to go around. That's how long it takes you to do a lap on that Ferris wheel. Okay, so all those characteristics you need to remember. Okay, so the next part is with the calculator. So can you give me a stat edit? And then we'll type it all in.
Okay, so here's the stat edit feature. Everybody's got that in. So we should do y equals everything we need is out. Activate plot and then zoom nine. So there's your pattern. So drawing the scatter plot should look something like that when you draw a scatter plot. Just give me a general idea of what you're seeing. And then you need to put your variables on there. So this should have time and this should have depth. Okay, so there's the pattern. Now we're gonna get an equation. So give me a stat. Calculate sine regression. Oh, did everybody check their mode? Is everybody in radians before we even do anything? Radians, radians, radians. Okay, everything should be to two decimals, and some of you are still forgetting y equals, but you're not gonna do on this test. Third time's a charm, right? Y equals, okay, so give me y equals vars copy-paste, and then deactivate plot. Question B, determine the depth at after nine seconds. So that is a X value. So what do you do when I give you an X value? Trace nine. Trace nine. Are you getting an error? Did anybody try it? Okay, so why am I getting an error? The window. The window, looking at my X, it's only up to 7.7, .7, so I have to change it anything bigger than 9 so that it can fit. Try it again. So trace 9. This question said to the tenth of a meter, so it'd be 3.9 meters. Okay, um, how long is each cycle? I got two ways to do it. So method one is using this formula. So method one is two pi over B. So two pi over this number. 0.8 number, but I'm going to use my calculator. So here I go. 2 pi divide by, and how do I insert the B in there with my calculator? It's a copy and paste, right? So it's vars, stats, equation, and I just will use the B number of the equation. So there, it will do it for me, 2 pi over b. So 7.86 seconds to go through a cycle, a wave cycle. Okay, what is the other method if I forgot that? Okay, the other method 
was you could get, uh, let's say, a max and a max. So I would like, uh, I'd like... I'd like you to get me the first max and I'll get the second one, okay? Can you work on the first max for me? You get the first and I'll get the second one. So mine is 9.60. Anybody get me their first one? Anybody have the X value there? One point? Seven four. And then you would say, well, what's the distance between those two points? So you would subtract them. And look at that, we got we matched, right? So it's up to you what you want to do. I I prefer this one, but if that one makes more sense to you, you can do that one. Okay, how long do you spend higher than 3.5 meters for each wave cycle? So what are you gonna do for that question? You're gonna do a y2, right? Because that's a height of 3.5. So give me a y2 So per cycle, so this is me being higher than it. Okay, or I could take that. It doesn't matter which cycle you take. I'm going to do this cycle. I want to know that X number, and I want to know that X number. And then I would subtract those numbers to say how long was I doing it for. Okay, can you work to get me the intersections? Remember, your mouse has to be closer to the one you want to find. So if I'm finding a specific one, I'm just going to make sure my mouse is closer to it. If you want to know my trick of when I do things and work faster, if I want my mouse to move there, I do like a trace one, and then my mouse is just somewhere closer, and then I do my intersection. So I always move my mouse first by just doing a trace and a number that I'm just guessing until I get my mouse closer, because move, 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 that takes me too long. So I always use the trace button to move my mouse. Okay before I do it. So then I subtract that and it took me 2.5 seconds. So for 2.5 seconds, we're higher than that depth. Okay, and each time. So somebody, if your neighbor did this, they might have done this number and this number and subtracted those two numbers should still be 2.5. Okay, last question. <clears throat> so we have a car tire that it's a 24 inch tire and it takes six seconds for the wheel to make a rotation. So we have a 24 inch, it takes six seconds. to go around. I need you to get me the time in these spots. 
So zero seconds, and we finish at six seconds. So can you get me the time on those quadrants? Okay, this one's mental math. If you forget what you're doing because the numbers are hard, I take six and I actually divide it by four. Does that make sense why I divide it by four? There's four sections. So 1.5, every section is 1.5. So then three, and then 1.5 more is 4.5, 1.5 more is six. So we're gonna do that at the time. So zero, 1.5, 3, 4.5, and six. So that's how we broke up the time. Okay, so the rock gets stuck in the tire. Where would a rock get stuck in your tire to start with? Where would it be? On the ground, right? So Evan, can I use you as an example? Me and Evan, Evan were working on her problem. Um, she was given an equation. She typed it in properly. We couldn't figure out what was going on because her rock was getting stuck like midair instead of at zero. And I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense in the real life. Your rock shouldn't just enter at 20 inches, right? Like that doesn't make sense. It's not flying out of the air. And her, the problem was that it was in degrees instead of radians. So that's why. So it gets stuck there. Would you agree the height is zero? Then we travel over here. What is the height of the rock over here? 12. And then we travel to the top where we are, 24. Then we're back to 12, and then we're back to zero. Okay, obviously I will now make you do stat, edit, calculate, get an equation, and I'll probably ask you more questions on the test, but we've already had practice with that, so we'll just leave it like that.